Hello, you perky pop fans. How are you doing? Welcome to Full Record Jacket with Phil and Ben, except it's without Ben. Again, it is another Ben-free edition. If only going Ben-free was good for the environment or something, we could be helping the country towards net zero. But uh, unfortunately, going Ben-free has really no benefits and it means everything's a lot less fun. But that's just the way things are. So it's another monologue from me. And um, I'm asking you to indulge my fantasy on this one. It's, uh, well, where do I go with this? Um, It's another of my fantasy set lists. Now, my personality, uh, if you do one of these personality type tests, uh, my personality is introvert. And I can't remember the four letter name for my uh, personality type. But basically, one of the attributes is that um, people with my personality type are drawn to or fascinated by people who are considered to be controversial. So if someone's controversial, uh, apparently, I can't help but be interested in them. And that's, I think it's pretty true. I, I, I do, I do get interested as soon as I hear that someone is causing a controversy. So maybe that helps to explain why my favourite pop stars from the 80s and and into the 90s and beyond are Prince and Madonna. Now, I realise we we tend to talk about uh, classic rock, alternative rock, guitar bands and stuff on this programme, but we also do delve into all other areas of music as well. So I thought I'd I do a Prince and Madonna indulgence. Sorry if if you don't like either of them. You may as well just not continue to watch because that's all I'm going to be doing. Now, this is, um, I'm basing this on something that had a bit of a real story behind it because not long after Prince died, uh, Guy Asiri, who was Madonna's manager for many years, posted attributes online and he revealed something that I don't think had been revealed before and he said that uh, he'd had the idea that Madonna and Prince should do a joint headline world tour together and he had actually suggested this idea to Madonna and she apparently was all up for it in fact she was so enthusiastic for the idea she even dreamed up the name for what the tour would be called. She thought it could be called the Royalty Tour. And uh, it was suggested to Prince, apparently, and his reaction was, uh, he apparently said something along the lines of, I don't think the world is quite ready for this, or something like that. So it did seem that he was kind of uh, not quite so enthusiastic as Madonna to do this. Now, I have... No idea if if Prince hadn't died, if circumstances had been different, what the chances would have been of this ever happening. Um, If it had happened, undoubtedly, there would have been a massive amount of media hype and huge numbers of people would have been applying for tickets. And depending on how many shows they wanted to do and and how far they wanted to take it i'm pretty sure that it would have had the potential to perhaps be the highest grossing uh tour of of pop concerts ever staged but it never happened of course but i got to thinking in my little fantasy world of what would what would it have been like if it had happened now as i say i think it was probably would have been very unlikely because both prince and madonna famously uh, complete control freaks, basically. I mean, Prince was well known uh, for uh, his you know, being being controlling, not necessarily in a nasty way, but uh, he always liked to have total control over everything. And Madonna, again, very similar. I mean, recently, of course, she's been in hospital. She went down with some uh, nasty virus, which was pretty serious by all accounts. And it seems that that, you know, that may have come about as partly as a result of her being fatigued from working 12-hour days, apparently supervising the uh, rehearsals for her upcoming 
celebration tour, which is going to be her her first ever greatest hits tour where she does all greatest hits throughout the concert. So again, you see, they can't let go. They can't cede control to somebody else. Um, so how on earth would, would Madonna and Prince have been able to agree on a joint concert tour? Well, I think maybe one way that it could have been done, maybe, is that if they'd split responsibilities and had two separate areas that they controlled. So Prince, obviously being the more naturally talented musician, would be the musical director, the executive producer of the music, and he would put the band together. And the band would be a, a load of musicians who would play on both of their songs and throughout the whole concert, and obviously supervise all of the music rehearsals and hiring the musicians, etc., and even picking maybe the track list and everything uh, with some input from Madonna, obviously, as to which of her songs she wanted to do. And then Madonna would be the executive producer of everything related to the theatrical uh, presentation of the show and obviously the choreography with her, her dance background and her concerts being more uh, based around that kind of thing. Maybe then, maybe it could have been worked out. Who knows? But um, so I got to thinking about what what format would these concerts take and uh, and how, how would the show go? So I'm thinking this would be largely a greatest hits type tour. So most of the songs they would be performing would be well known. Uh, so that would be a bit of a departure for both of them because they always did on their concert tours tend to concentrate on their newer material as well. Uh, I saw Prince a, a number of times um, and I saw him in 1995 when he did a concert that was basically all stuff that had not yet come out on record. The, the forthcoming album was called The Gold Experience. And I think this tour was called The the, the live experience and he basically debuted this whole album uh, that we'd hardly heard any of it at all I think maybe we'd heard the most beautiful girl in the world which was his big hit single at that time but the rest of it uh, was totally new it was a very entertaining concert but it is quite you know it's a bit of a a different thing isn't it when you go to a show and you don't actually know the music, most people have much more of a good time when they're hearing all the hits that they know and love. So I'm thinking you know, to make this a big deal, that's what they would have to concentrate on. But they might be able to do a few slightly less well-known songs, maybe ones that their fans respectively loved, maybe to give a bit of interest to the hardcore fans as well. So with this, I'm, I'm saying that and it's a fantasy, so I can I can have this concert happen however I want. And I'm saying that rather than them have two separate sets, uh, which obviously would cause a bit of a problem as to who was going to be on first and who would effectively be seen as the headliner, I don't think that was going to be a, a goer at all. So I think it would have to be very much a joint thing that they were definitely uh, double header. And I, I'm envisaging a scenario in which the two of them were on stage together a lot of the time. And I think this could maybe kind of work uh, because obviously when Madonna's singing, Prince can be playing pretty much any instrument uh, that he wanted to be playing. So maybe he could be playing a bit of guitar or playing bass or, or whatever. And then while Prince is singing one of his songs, Madonna could be assisting with backing vocals or maybe doing some choreography and doing part of the the, the supporting uh, dancing as well. So maybe maybe that could work uh, if Prince is prepared to cede part of the spotlight to Madonna. He did have, have a track record in doing this, actually, because there was a performance uh, at one of these American award shows. I can't remember which one it was. It was either like the Grammys or the video awards or whatever there's so many of these award ceremonies in america aren't they but prince did a, a performance with beyonce in uh, 2000 something i can't remember the exact year maybe 2004 
and uh, it was like a medley of both their hits uh, worked together into this this brief but rather dazzling performance. It's a very good one. Um, so maybe he could have done that at, at full concert length with Madonna. And I guess it would have also been within um, sort of the tradition of Prince in the sense that he was a guy who was very uh, supportive of women in music. I mean, he had a woman recording engineer on a lot of his records. In fact, the, in fact more than one, but the most famous one uh, is a lady called Susan Rogers who worked on, I think, Purple Rain and all that era. She was the recording engineer and she also helped to set up, I believe, the studios at, at Paisley Park as well when he had that built. And uh, it was very difficult in those days for women to get into that area of work. I remember seeing a, a personal testimony once by a woman from this country who had worked as a professional recording engineer in the early 1980s, but it had taken her a very long time to actually get an apprenticeship and get accepted because it really was quite a, quite a chauvinist culture at that time. In fact, she said that a lot of um, teams of engineers turned her down. They said, we don't want a woman because we want to be able to swear stuff like that. So it really, really was very, very different in those days. So Prince was at the forefront, certainly, of encouraging women, not just in, in engineering, but of course, in, in music, he had low, no end of female collaborators. And of course, there were uh, people like uh, Lisa Coleman, who was the keyboard player in the revolution, Sheila E, the drummer, he was a big uh, advocate of her. And Wendy Melvoin, who was the the other guitarist in the revolution. I think that must have been pretty pretty ahead of its time because when you think about it, there's a lot of bands that have had, you know, men in the band and a female singer. I think of bands like uh, let's say Big Brother Holding Company with Janis Joplin and um, Joan Jett and the Blackhearts and Blondie. Uh, but usually the guitars are played by the guys. And to think of a, a band where there's women guitarists, that would tend to be an all-female band, like, say, the Bangles, something like that. So the idea of a male guitarist sharing the spotlight with a woman guitarist, I think that's pretty rare in rock and pop history. So Prince did that in the revolution. So, yeah, so would he share the spotlight with the best-selling woman artist of all time? Maybe he would have done so. Okay, so let's go into it, shall we? What is the royalty tour gonna, gonna contain? I've, I'm sad enough. I've actually come up with a, a set list for this. Can you tell I was in a scenario recently where I was quite bored and waiting for a long time somewhere, and I, I had time to play on my phone. So uh, I've done this. So this is this is what's going to happen. So the concert starts obviously with great hype. Um, it's probably going to be taking place at the O2 or Madison Square Garden. Maybe it's a stadium show as well if it's going around the world. But uh, I don't know if there's going to be a support act or not. But everyone who's gone, obviously, is is excited and getting hyped up. It's, the lights have gone out. Madonna and Prince are, you know, are going to take to the stage. And suddenly the spotlights come on and Madonna and, Bo and Prince are there together. Uh, illuminated and the crowd goes wild and the fans are getting really into it and they kick off with well not a well-known number to the general public perhaps but it's dmsr uh by prince from his 1999 album and uh dmsr stands for dance music sex romance which i think is yeah, maybe a, a pretty good um uh, title to sum up prince and madonna so they're going to sort of duet on this it's a very funky tune that, that goes on and you can add lib in that and everything so it's going to they're going to do that and that's going to blend into everybody which was madonna's first ever record that dance record that she made uh in new york and, and is on her first album so there's everybody then they're going to go through sort of alternating a bit they're going to stay funky with controversy by prince and then they're going to go into material girl and we've got Let's Go Crazy, where, of course, Prince ends with the scorching guitar solo. And then that leads into a guitar track, a rare sort of 
guitar I'm going to call it a rocker. I'm going to call it sort of a pop dance song with guitar solos on it by Madonna. That's Burning Up from her first album. And then they're going to get funky on a Prince song called Chelsea Rogers, which comes from 2007. And then they've got Madonna's Dress You Up, uh, If I Was Your Girlfriend. And then their, their actual, their only actual duet that they did on record from Madonna's album Like a Prayer. That's Love Song which um, is worth checking out. I quite like that track, but maybe you have to be a Madonna and Prince fan to like it. But it's more princey than Madonna-y. But uh, there's Love Song. And then they're going to do American Life by Madonna. And that's going to go into another commentary on America, which is Sign of the Times by Prince. So that's the end of Act One. So everyone's really up and and into this concert. There's been quite a few hits. It's been pretty funky. And so everybody's, you know, absolutely buzzing. So they need to to settle things down a bit now. Prince is going to go off for a little bit of a rest and um, uh, a drink or whatever, however he chills out backstage. And Madonna's going to be on for a brief solo set with a string section. So this is a little bit of a ballad section. It's Madonna with strings. So she's going to do tracks like uh, This Used to Be My Playground, Crazy For You, Frozen, uh, which is a great one, and then Take A Bow, which was a massive hit in America. So a few a few Madonna ballads. Maybe they could change the ballads from show to show, give themselves a little bit of uh, variety. But So she does her little ballad section and then goes off for her little breather. And Prince comes on and does something that his fans love at his concerts, which is his uh, piano and microphone segment. So it's just Prince alone at the piano, no other accompaniment, and he does a medley of, uh, of, of piano tunes. So I've got down here, you know, The Beautiful Ones from Purple Rain, Do Me Baby, Diamonds and Pearls, How Come You Don't Call Me Anymore, which was uh, a B-side from the 1999 era, but that uh, was made a bit more famous. I think it was, uh, who was it? It was Alicia Keys did that. Um, and then Starfish and Coffee, which is a great uh, cult song among Prince fans, very singable, very uh, fun little ditty, almost like a children's song, but people love it. So he's, he's doing his, he's done this little piano and microphone segment. So then it's time for another little solo set by Madonna and her dancers. So they're going to take over the stage and uh, they're going to dance to Vogue and then Hung Up, which was kind of like the 2000s version of Vogue, that one with the ABBA sample. And then a couple of 80s ones that Madonna seems to like performing and are going to go down well with the general uh, pop fans who've gone to this concert, La Isla Bonita, uh, the Latin one, and then True Blue. So that's the brief Madonna solo set. Then Prince is going to come on, and he's going to do a quick uh, funky set with the band. He's doing uh, Baby I'm a Star, and then Sexy MF, Cream, and When You Were Mine, which is another cult favourite. Um, great song, that one. So it's time after that for Madonna and Prince to get back together um, and come on stage together and then build up towards the grand finale. So they're going to do another duet. They're going to do a duet on Prince's song Strange Relationship from his Sign of the Times album. Then they're kicking into Don't Tell Me, which is the Madonna one with the guitar figure on it. And, and she did a video where she was kind of dressed as a cowgirl and line dancing. And that will blend. I think you can, they could do a mashup of that with Alphabet Street. So let's don't tell me in Alphabet Street. I, I've spent too long thinking about this. Haven't I really have. Um, so then the hits are going to start coming now. So it's Kiss uh, from Prince and then Madonna's Open Your Heart from True Blue and then The Most Beautiful Girl in the World. After that, maybe there's going to be some kind of brief interlude or some kind of some kind of performance by the dancers while the the two stars go off for a bit of a quick break. And then they're going to come back on and duet again with another of Prince's well-known pop songs, Manic Monday, uh, 
best known by the Bangles, of course. And then we're into the real big hitters now. Like a Virgin will be followed by Little Red Corvette. And then uh, Madonna's going to do her Austin Powers one beautiful stranger and then it's raspberry beret by this point of course the crowd are all singing along with the choruses to these uh madonna's going to do borderline much loved song from her very early years and then they're going to duet again on nothing compares to you and after that they're going to have another little break it's going to be another little brief dance interlude and then they're going to come back on again. Prince is on bass for this. Um, and they're going to do a funky Madonna song, Express Yourself. That's going to lead into Prince's musicology. And that'll be mashed up with music by Madonna. And then they'll be going into the groove. So everybody will be grooving around to that 1985 hit. And that will be followed by 1999, at which point, of course, everybody will now be partying like it's the end of the 20th century. And um, I think they can have this sort of be end to 1999, go off, and obviously there's going to be a pre-planned encore. They're pretty much all pre-planned nowadays, aren't they? And the encore is going to be uh, Like a Prayer. Madonna will sing Like a Prayer. Prince can play bass or guitar on that or something. And then the encore, the final one, after Like a Prayer ends, Prince has his guitar, plays that opening chord from Purple Rain, and that can be a bit of a duet. And they're going to finish with Purple Rain, everybody singing along to that. And that's the end of the Madonna and Prince concert from the Royalty Tour, which never happened, except in my imagination. <laughs> so what do you think of that? Uh, if you made it to the end, you've got to be... A Madonna and Prince fan. I'll put my uh, dream track list below, and tell me what you think. What would you? What would your fantasy Madonna and Prince concert be? Or would your fantasy just have been that they'd never, neither of the two of them had ever existed? Whatever your opinion is on them, let me know in the comments, and I'll dream up another monologue, which I'll come back with very soon. Bye for now. <laughs>